Good evening, Free Enterprise fans, and welcome to the second round of 16. Yeah, I'm, we're here. Go ahead. Um, I'm Alicell, and I'm joined here by Antidale. Good evening, how are you? I'm doing well. Excited to see the second race of the second round of the Bracket State, uh, where we have our second seed playing. Yep, and our runners will be off shortly. Um, and what are you looking for in a seed tonight, Antidale? It'd be kind of nice to see a little bit of the rudeness that brackets can show, uh, where maybe we have a hook seed with only two or three characters. Um, or just that it's a little bit harder. We, we get a not stellar party for quite a while uh, and just kind of watch the, the runners have to really uh, kind of stretch their repertoire a little bit to get through. Is there anything you're looking forward to? I am definitely looking forward to some rudeness. Um, maybe some kind of outside the box grinding strategies especially with Sirens only possibly being available in Kakol's shop, you definitely see some of the grinds you wouldn't see in the uh, Swiss rounds. For sure. And it's nice to see if people do manage to find a Siren in a, in a trap chest or in a chest at all underground that they uh, kind of save it for the right time. You really start to manage that resource a lot differently. And um, for those who are joining us and maybe haven't seen a bracket round, do we want to go over the new flags for this? Sure. Uh, first, we'll start off with that there are only seven characters and we can't have any duplicates. Um, and then we have some changes to what we can find in chests and shops that I'll let you talk about. So we are both on T Pro and S Pro. That means treasures are more weighted to higher level spots or possibly um, less checked spots, such as uh, the Mist Cave or the backside of Watery Pass. Um, as for S Pro, that means a lot of those items that kind of got you through the early game and the Swiss rounds are not available. Um, sirens are only available in Kakol's shop, uh, if they're available in the seat at all. Um, you won't see a lot of the J items. And that quarter that's kind of listed there at the bottom of errors screen means that things will only sell for a quarter. Yeah, it's definitely going to limit the amount that our runners uh, can purchase things, even though the purchasing pool is limited too. I know we saw runners earlier uh, make a lot of use of vampires to get through the overworld, and those are going to be limited to gated shops as our cursed rings and cabins. Uh, so just a lot of the nice little tools people used before are harder to get. Very true. It's um, definitely a higher level of play for sure. And it looks like we're starting with 60 hit points and a bard. And we're off. Hopefully we get a character to kind of compliment Edward with his low HP. That is the opposite of a character that compliments. Yeah, so 90 HP in a dream so far. We're going to definitely be looking for dancing daggers. And possibly an early play to uh, Mount Hobbs to maybe pick up Rydia a good summon. Very true. We did start with that pass, though, so we know that our path to Zeromus is there. It looks like Sid, the Asuras bot, Pan, uh, Twin Harp, and I think there's one that I missed there for our objectives today. So not a bad set. Yeah, a little bit of required music for tonight. A 
And both we runners. do see in... Oh, go ahead. I was just saying both runners picking the, the dive to Baron in or and doing the Baron checks first. And we did see a Rosa in the Baron Inn, guarded by a Lunar Sparkle. And a couple of decent bows. That Elven bow is going to be very good. That air that both runners picked up, as well as the headband. And Arid picked up a Gaia Drum in the back. Uh, so that'll be very nice for defeating some early enemies. Penguinator looking to loot the back four chests here in the Watery Passage. Uh, Watery Passage is one of the places that got a boost in terms of what treasures can be here. So you'll find better treasure here than in many other ungated overworld places. Um, and Air is going through the front portion. Not finding a whole lot um, on the back side. Did find a black shirt, which the defense is great. Yeah, definitely helps stretch Radius 30 HP for a little bit longer. That Aegis shield will be nice once they get somebody who can utilize it, though. It looks like we just found a ninja sword and a boomerang if we ever find an edge. But overall, not a lot of help yet for this party. No, definitely going to be a little scary going up hops. Yeah, we'll see if Damsine gives the runners any little bit extra help. Uh, but like as we, we saw earlier, Error did have that Gaia Drum. So that's a pretty good J item that will take about half of the HP off of the hops, unless it's a multi-part boss, in which case, or a multi-enemy boss. I guess it'll help even more. I want some mute arrows, too, in the, ba in the Damsine basement. This will go great with that elven bow that they picked up earlier. And just a Rydia it looked like in the bed. Yeah, so Sandruby is just going to get you a, a key item towards 10 and a full heal if you decide to go use it. Uh, but it won't get you a new character unless you've already ditched that Rydia. Another one of the changes in the Bracken Flag set is that you can no longer go to the Tower of Witches in Visidia to reclaim characters. Once you dismiss someone, they're gone unless you find them again in a normal character pickup slot. And we see Penguinator doing shop checks while it looks like Error is going to head up Hobbs. Yeah, both totally reasonable calls. Air probably looking to leverage the, the weaponry he's picked up, that Blitz Whip and the, the Elven Bow, and hopefully finding another character up here that can help out the party, um, where Penguinator is just going to look to increase their, their damage output by, by purchasing things instead. And that is not exactly the boss you want to see up here on the mountain if that is ruby proper yeah the without any mass healing oh this won't be too bad then elements won't be won't be awful and that sid is a very nice pickup for this team effectively pretty much quintuples their current hp level Yeah, and in Venerable in chat pointing out that uh, Air had managed to get the elements moved over to the Rubicon form and the Elven Bow that Edward has since Rubicon in that particular form, uh, not in his base uh, enemy stat, but in the, ooh, and a Dancing Dagger, uh, but Rubicon in the Elements fight is a mage, so got extra damage off of that Elven Bow. Yes, very nice play. Um, it's always interesting to see players take advantage of the weaknesses of bosses. 
and Bangonator finds Dancing Daggers for sale. Uh, so both runners are able to pick up Dancing Daggers, which is a pretty big thing here because you're able to use it as an item repeatedly to do uh, between three and 500 damage, depending on the spot. And getting the Titan Summon off of Hobbs, that'll be very nice for Iridia. Yeah, that's a huge pickup early. Gives her a pretty good source of damage there. Yeah, that's always one of the two that I'm really looking forward to. I'd either want Sylph or Titan. Uh, Sylph to get some healing and some really good single target damage, or Titan to get some nice uh, multi-target damage. And Penguinator also getting his Titan. Looks like he's going to go through the front of Hobbs. Yeah, and these back four chests are also at a kind of a boosted level. Um, so I like this play in brackets when you don't have an exit mage early. I want some very nice Jagoon armor in the save room in Antlion. Uh, that Sid is going to be well protected and will be a great uh, frontline character for, for Error. Uh, Pixel97 in chat asking it for an estimated time. Uh, since it's a randomizer, we don't actually have a super accurate estimate. It's probably going to end up being somewhere over an hour 20, but below two hours is kind of the very rough math. Uh, but we'll just see how fast they're able to complete the five objectives to get their crystal and get the level so they can beat Zeromas. Penguinator completely switches the second part of the Elements fight and just takes him down straight away. I didn't see if that was an intentional knocking down of Rydia to keep her at an anchor, or if that was just she happened to uh, get punched pretty early in that fight and took a nap. I believe it was... Um... Not intentional, but at that point, you just kind of think, okay, we can hold her here for a little while. Yeah, and Air is through that Bahamut, who is taking the place of Antlion, uh, and gets a shiny rock, while Penguinator picks up a Cursed Ring. And to answer a question in chat uh, by Drogon1088, the seed number is where they fell uh, in the brackets. So Penguinator was uh, basically had the second highest strength of schedule, whereas uh, Error was 18. And Error heads straight to Fabul. Yeah, that's pretty reasonable with this party. You could think about if you had picked up a good weapon for Sid going to Baron Inn, uh, but you're still kind of looking for levels and XP, especially for Rydia with that Titan to kind of let her be able to cast it multiple times. And we see a French vanilla mom bomb just moved over a little bit. Yeah, instead of... Uh, Kind of tangle with Young at the top of Mount Hobbs, once they just tangle with all of Fabul at the same time. And both runners have used uh, bows to back row glitch Sid. That's a thing in uh, Final Fantasy IV where as soon as someone has the ability to attack from long range without a penalty, uh, the game never actually takes it away if you take off weapons that grant it to you. So you're able to do full damage from the back row once you've equipped uh, a bow and arrow or a boomerang or a dwarf axe. And we see Edward in his default position, tanking the ground.
I'll be curious if th these uh, objectives are possibly fast enough, depending on who is at the uh, Osiris spot in the Land of Summoned Monsters, that we could see any strats from one of the runners. Well, there's part one of um, one of our objectives. Yeah, you're picking up that twin harp from the King of Fubul after defending it. And it gives them the opportunity to complete objective number one out of our five. They've already completed number five by picking up Sid at the top of Hobbs. And we see a nope rope in uh, the Baron Inn. Yeah, this is actually kind of a gross place for it, especially with that early dancing dagger from Peguinator. Uh, Ogopogo will immediately do uh, half your damage, half your health and damage with those waves, and then will react to any spell cast on him uh, with some sort of counter. Most spells will get that counter of uh, the blaze, which is another 20%. And we have a gauntlet. Yeah, one of the new flags in 4.0 uh, changes the normal Fabul defense uh, from that series of fights with soldiers and uh, weepers and such uh, to drawing from random encounters throughout the area of where you kind of fight it. So in this case, we've gotten stuff from the Baron Sewers coming to evade the Baron Inn. And Penguinator wanted none of that, but does pick up another elven bow from the Chocobo Forest. Yeah, notice both runners have checked out the Chocobo Forest. Those are another place that were considered lonely uh, in the kind of uh, gating rating system for chests, and so they also get a boost. And it looks like Penguinator is heading up to uh, Mount Ordeals, probably looking for um, the key item and his underground access, maybe hoping that it's not through that Baron Inn. Yeah, that would be a little bit rude if it's through that Baron Inn fight. And we have another little bit of shuffled just a little bit where Mylon Z is on the other side of the bridge. Definitely a place the runners should be happy to see because this Mylon Z pretty much only does fight commands and the fight is really, really low here. And those dancing daggers are definitely doing some work. And Error is through the first fight in Baron Inn and is about to get the bad news. Yeah, definitely not the blue robe that you hope for here. Although one side effect of pulling the random encounters from the area is that you actually will get experience points for this fight. Without getting that blaze counter too from not using the Dancing Dagger like Penguinator did, Error has a little bit more health. And we see some Lunar Dragons on Penguinator's side. Not a great fight to see here. No, they also have some uh, HP based attacks that will take you down pretty fast and since it is a back attack spot they're going to go first and do a lot of damage to you. We might see some lunar frogs come at them.
and in Venerable in chat, noting that the Firebomb is going to be golden here. Uh, Sid's HP is definitely going to make that very nice. Um, that is an HP-based attack and does fire damage, which the Lunar Dragons are weak to. And we get to see one frog. Pegonator. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, Pegonator wisely attacking the one who was frogged, which means that when it tries to cast wall on uh, both frogs, or on both dragons, uh, it can't do it because frogs can't cast magic. Uh, and so lets the one D Lunar just virus the other one out of existence. And we see Error just kind of plugging through on this fight with the um, Alt Gauntlet. While Penguinator takes down the Lunar Dragons. And we have a Darkness Crystal from the top of Ordeals. Yeah, that's very welcome. Uh, is another character check. Uh, gets you the big whale that if we find Atella, that we can then go to Atella or Fusaya. We can go to the giant and uh, do a Mac giant grind or a D machine grind, depending on what our party composition looks like. There's still enough progression towards actually getting underground, and we do need to be able to get underground access without going to the moon. So at this point, it means underground access is either behind this gauntlet or through that twin heart. Yeah, or a cheekily hiding D-Mist. Oh yeah, D-Mist. I always forget about that until I run out of spaces to check. Yeah, without a boss objective, the runners are probably a little less incentivized to check the waterfall or mist cave to see if anyone interesting is hiding. And Error is just given the package for his trouble. That is an awful lot of work for Rosa. Rosa's great, though. And as Invenerable does point out, there could be a D-Mist at the end of that package. That would be much spicier than a D-Mist at Maggot Sisters. Both are runners immediately taking their most recent gains and going straight for them. And just another sit, so Air is not having any of that right now. Yeah, I don't blame him. I would not want to sit through the cutscenes uh, just for the possibility of it being a demon, unless I absolutely had to. And Pegonator looks to be doing the general play of trying to avoid going to Fabul unless you have to, uh, which seems like that Fabul is going to be the play in order to get the Twin Harp, and then get underground.
And looks like he is going to check the character right quick. Probably not going to be doing any bosses or grinding up here yet, as he doesn't have a very good party set up. No, definitely too early for any of that. That's a quack kit. We have a very mage-based party. That's going to make that uh, Dark Elf spot pretty nasty. And with that and the curse ring that we have, Penguinator does have the opportunity to do a cheeky little grind uh, for the reaction grind, uh, where you could set up, a, give someone the cursed ring so that he'll be all at relative agility one and cast a single targeted lightning one spell at a uh, grenade, I believe, uh, which would then net his party a good bit of XP. Ooh, and that's a nice hourglass here out of the value cave. Definitely worth checking these chests if you get up here early. Yeah, doing a little checking probably too to see who the boss is and see if it's maybe uh, King Quinn Emblem. And that crystal ring is very, very nice. That's free, but not free for this party quite yet. Yeah, that'll be very nice knowledge as soon as you get a little bit more health can definitely take this on. Yeah, depending on which fight it is, um, you could use a coffin to, if it's the officer-soldier fight, to get rid of the officer and just let the soldiers punch each other. Um, but as Simbu and Chad is pointing out, it's a long fight. Uh, and since they're going to get their punches off pretty early and knock anyone out, they have a pretty good chance of knocking out the person who's going to use the hourglass in order to uh, stop them. So it's a little bit risky still at this point. Better to just know as soon as you get a little bit better, you can go up there and knock it out and get a free key item location check. But Penguinator getting the news that he is going to have to start looking for his underground access. And Aaron makes quick work of those D-Lunars using Titan to great effect. Uh, meanwhile, Penguinator does find some Thor Rages in the shop in Agart. Thor Rages are one of the items that are guaranteed to be available in the overworld because there's, uh, a couple, there's one specific rude boss who Thor Rages help you handle quite well. Yeah, an early Kignazzo can kind of take, well, Kignazzo anywhere can kind of take out your party if it's in a bad spot. Yeah, and in chat, uh, Tybalt2010 asks if package was checked. The package character was checked, and it's another Sid, um, so we didn't need to do that. We don't know who the boss there is. And now we'll see where Error decides to go after this, if he's going to go on a boss hunt, or if he's going to go try out that music.
And it looks like Air is going to follow a similar play to Penguinator, going up to raise his Lunar Whale. Probably will pick up his Palum. And we'll see where he heads to next. And it looks like um, Penguinator is just kind of getting through the alt gauntlet. Not a whole lot to say there. No, but he is making good use of uh, some of those items he picked up, although the Electfish are eating those Thor Rages and getting a little bit of health back. And earlier, MTI in chat asks if the objectives are viewable in game anywhere. Uh, they're always viewable when you first start out, and, and Guiding Way comes and reads you off them. And then also in the in game tracker, where you can see what key items you picked up. If you press right when you're in that screen, you can then switch over to a screen where you can go see the objectives that you have. Uh, and we'll kind of gray them out if you've completed them and leave them uh, pretty obviously uh, undone if you have yet to complete. It was a very nice quality of life addition that Boardface has uh, added in 3.0 for the objective tracker, and then in 4.0 when objectives came out, or 3.0 for the key item tracker. And then when objectives came out, they were added to that screen immediately. Yeah, that's definitely saved me quite a bit of time when I can't remember what my uh, objectives are two hours later. For sure. Sometimes it's hard to write them down in time. Uh, Lord Goober 3 in chat asking who was on the moon. It was a Palop, so we had a moon quake kit. And just a Rubicant in the missed spot, which is nice to see him there and not in a much ruder location. Yeah, both Gwenners just kind of reconverging after having done pretty much all of the same checks. Pegginator still has to do Fabul. And, and I'm not surprised by the reluctance to go do the Twin Harp, since that's a very high magic resistant spot. Yeah, this is not the team that you would want to take to go do that spot. Uh, get cooped in chat asking why people fade for bull. Uh, it's because you're trying to minimize the amount of times you go to specific locations. So if you can get underground access by not going to Fabul, you can sometimes prevent uh, triple dipping if you have to uh, go to Fabul and then go visit Yang in the underground and then go visit him again once you get the pan. You're just trying to eventually go for economy of action. It can backfire a little bit on you if you have a party that doesn't very strong because you're skipping out on about 5,000 relatively easy XP. Or if your underground access 
or easier underground accesses at Fabul. Or as you've seen in some other races, say you have a package at Fabul who gives you a Fusoya. It is one of the pieces of, of risk-reward routing um, that can often pay off very well and can, can occasionally backfire on you too. And we are to Chad's favorite time of the seed. We're about to hear some music. Yeah, one of the wonderful bits of flavor that we have is that uh, when Edward goes to play the twin harp, it will play a different randomized song. Uh, usually other video game music, a little bit of pop culture music as well. I can see Chad is getting their freeing harps out. And we will be quiet for a few minutes while we have music. Yeah, so while we are having the great long CPU fight here for music, uh, Chad is asking what Penguinator is. Uh, Penguinator is looking for a specific fight where he can use that reaction grind we kind of talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, where if he finds a grenade and is able to cast a single target lit one on it, it will react and kill all of the other enemies in the fight. Yeah, it's a very nice way to get some early XP for not a lot of effort, but not having a whole lot finding the right fight here. Uh, 
Uh, looks like with that strike first that he got, he's able to. We'll be getting it off on this one. Except down goes Palom. But Rydia saves the day. For sure. And Coop and Chad asking or suggesting that he should hourglass there. That would actually prevent the reaction from happening, since the enemies would be stopped. That's a lot of good experience points from Penguinator. Able to get up to Quake on the kid. I uh, saw Berserk and maybe Blink on Rosa. Uh, but definitely Berserk. And Error is through his CPU fight. GG to him. And is very well rewarded with that magma key. So air should be our first one underground. We'll see how much faster Penguinator is, Penguinator is able to do the fight, uh, since he does have all those extra levels. Penguinator continuing also the checks in the Choco, Chocobo Forest, checking the Choco butt this time. And we'll likely have an easier time of um, his CPU fight with those extra levels. And Marilyn in chat pointing out that uh, the quake that Palom has will definitely make the underground checks a little bit easier. Uh, might not have that much effect here in this particular fight because of the magic resistance we talked about earlier. Uh, and Pepita in chat asking about float strats. Those would be great, except that Rosa doesn't get float for quite a while. So we wouldn't be able to cast wall and float to make one of the orbs, hopefully the attacker usually, uh, float above a quake that we could then start casting. And Napoleon in chat asking about sirens being underground. Uh, they can only be purchasable in the Kokol shop. Uh, if we find an edge, they are also stealable from the alerts in the trap chest in Lower Babel. And Error making a beeline for Fey March. Gonna get the knowledge on who is in that Asura spot and get his free key item check. And just a ninja hat. Well, 
it's a good pickup, it's not what you really wanted to see. No, really nice for the agility boosting so that you can kind of manipulate your party's agility into getting the turn order you're looking for at some point. Oh, and that's still something that's very nice for Rydia. Even though we're close to the end of the time that it's exceptionally useful, uh, it will still be nice for a little while longer. Wyvern. That is actually a great spot for a Wyvern uh, if you have the, the Star Veils for it. Uh, with Rydia and that Sil Summon that Era picked up, it'd be very, very easy to make sure that Rydia and maybe Palum get Star Veils up and then Rydia can just keep casting Sylph at uh, Wyvern, which will then keep re. Uh, Recountering with Mega Nuke. And indeed, Maggie the Cat, it is SMRPG. Chad is asking if Air had picked up the Curse Ring, and I don't think it did. It was in the top chest in the Antlion Cave, the one that you normally only pick up when you walk back out, but he used an exit to get out. Yep, he did skip that Curse Ring. And I missed the seed validation with the Job Dwarf check. Did you catch it, Allie? It was an Administrative Services Engineer, I think. A very useful position. I'm sorry, Administrative Service Manager. Thank you, Marilyn. And Penguinator is through that CPU, uh, even having quaked a little bit too much and gotten some uh, Globe 199 to the face, uh, picking up a little bit extra XP that way. And Penguinator deciding to walk back to his airship versus taking a purple chocobo or black chocobo. Yeah, if you catch the a yellow or black chocobo uh, pretty fast once you get back from uh, the Cave Magnus trip, it can actually save you a little bit of time by taking the chocobo back down to your airship. An air we see entering Dwarf Castle from the back way, uh, looking to probably just use the pot and then hopefully exit back out of here in order to get to the airship uh, from the back entrance. Does find an earth hammer and a mute knife for sale. Yeah, Earthhammer is very nice for Sid, a good upgrade. Uh, it even gives him a little bit of multi-target attacking, although the, the quake that it does is, is pretty weak, only about two or 300 points of damage. Oh no, error, don't do that. Uh, error is now going to have to walk out the back. Um, since he saved out the front now of Dwarf Castle. It's a little unfortunate. And 
we see a dancing bygan in the first spot in Dwarf Castle. Yeah, as our runners high five. Yeah, Penguinator with his access to actual Quake, uh, which will go off a little bit faster than Titan, and with having uh, his agility manipulated so that Palom will go first, will definitely have an easier time with this fight. Although it looks like actually Rose is in the top spot now, kind of Berserk Sid, which will also be very useful. And Eddie taking a nap on both sides. is also down on Error's side. Yeah, well, since Palom doesn't have any HP, uh, it's still base level on Error's side. That's not as big of a deal as it would be if it was down on Penguinator's side. And Penguinator is through the Bygan fight. Where air resets out. That reaction grind sure did an extra good bit of work for Penguinator. And he is rewarded with an edge. That will make that ninja sword and boomerang that we got much earlier in the seed very nice. Gets through that Odin very quickly. Yeah, one quick four rage and a quake, and Odin uh, goes to take a nap. And as Chap points out, Penguinator did sell his ninja swords. Ooh, I miss that. Yeah, Zilch having another rough time with this Bygen fight. Uh, Bygen punches pretty hard here, and he does not have a lot of HP on this team other than Sid. This is going to be a long road for him. And just looks like a Dragon Whip as a reward for Dwarf Castle, so not too much. The edge is definitely the big, the big gain there. And we get a free silk web from the pot. And we find cabins for sale. Yeah, it's always nice when you actually know that you have access to those cabins. And illusions also be very useful. That blink spell is very, very useful. Yeah, Ninja Debugger ask, in chat asking what we got off of Lucas Necklace. It was a Dragon Whip. kind of going over the same checks that Error has made. We'll see if he validates his seed. Looking like probably not, unfortunately. 
We do notice that since Penguinator knows he has that curse ring, he's not really checking armor shops at all anymore. Because the curse ring is probably the only thing our runners would actually be looking for out of And we'll see if Penguinator takes a swing at that Wyvern. I would be a little surprised if he doesn't. Uh, again, since he has the curse ring, uh, and I'm, I know Penguinator knows about the reaction from from Wyvern uh, countering any summon with a Mega Nuke. Uh, not sure if he will check the item shop and pick up the Sil Summon, though. That'd be the one thing that might keep him from doing. And you have to feel bad for Error here, just kind of throwing his head against this Bygun. Uh, beating his head against that wall of Bygan and his arms. Yeah, Bygan is a nasty enemy. Not fun pretty much anywhere you see him. I'm almost curious if uh, he might go and do some alerts. Sid with that Earth Hammer would be able to one-shot any of them. Uh, in the, the lower babble to get a little bit of XP. Well, and even the potential for a nice uh, piece of gear would be um, good for him. Maybe his characters wouldn't be quite so squishy. Yeah, some extra defense. Look like Penguinator is just going to go with uh, Berserking Gridia with the Dragon Whip, because Wyvern is a dragon, so she will do extra melee damage. But didn't have enough Star Veils to get to her. Yeah, it could be intentional for leaving her in that spot and then letting Rosa berserk her. found it odd that Drain Sword does not give you health when you throw it. Yeah, it must mean that you just have to hold on to it while, uh, uh, in order to get the effect. Although, I think mechanically none of the, uh, throw, thrown weapons actually have any of their kind of extra statuses or effects on them. Penguinator takes down that wyvern. Yeah, it was very nicely done. And gets a barren key for his troubles. Yeah, a couple more key item checks for him. Uh, three, two more boss checks that we don't know who they are in order to get objectives two and three done. It looks like Error has decided to go ahead and kind of try something else. Yeah, that is good news for him. Uh, he needs to make some progress at this point in the seed. Uh, 
and so not continuing to beat his head against that that Bygen is definitely going to be useful for him. And we'll see if Sheila One gives anything of value. Not exactly the best swords for your edge, but at least it's something. And as Flurry points out, a vanilla pan would be huge because you typically don't want to check Sheila one if you've got a lot of other checks available. Well, those Artemis arrows will be useful in taking down Wyvern. Well, other than that, Sheila won without much value for our runners today. And to answer a question in chat, the um, bosses down in the Fey March were Dark Elf and Wyvern. I wonder if we'll see error or yeah, see error make a play to Keyless Tower to get that twenty six thousand XP that's available up there and hopefully not too rude of a bot. And we see a DKC not doing a whole lot of damage. No worries about having to life anybody up. Nope, just gonna have to sit through a speech. King of Baron tonight. Looks like we have some guards in a trench coat. And this does give Penguinator the knowledge that up there on the moon is the two guard fight. Yeah, so we'll see if he maybe saves the hourglass that he has for that fight. And we see a Cecil. That is interesting. And we say goodbye to Sid. As our tracker Crimson Avix points out, we do see that is now all seven characters that are in the, available in the seed as known. So we will not see a D machine grind tonight. And we saw Air use uh, the Sylph Summon. So Rudy does have it, so I imagine that we're going to see her starting to cast Sylph a bunch. Uh, 
and I missed the item that came out of the pot. As did I. Ah, chat saying it was a Zeus gauntlet. Well, that's definitely something that Edge is going to be happy with for right now, and if we ever find a powerful weapon for Cecil, Cecil might borrow it. And thank you, chat. And we see a plague down here in the Odin spot. Not too scary of a boss. I believe, Marilyn, that the Baron Key was actually here behind this wyvern. And without that curse ring that Penguinator has, Air is having a lot more trouble with this fight, not able to get enough Star Veils off. And also since he doesn't have the levels to pick up that Dragon Whip, kind of limits him in how he's able to deal with his Wyvern fight. Poor Cecil has no power. I think we're on the press A and pray part of the fight. Yeah, I think Rosa, both Rosa and Edge are uh, berserked, so that should make these uh, zero counts just kind of stay forever. Or maybe not quite. And yes, and I do. Cecil was the reward for defeating Baron, as along with a Zeus Gauntlet. And that pigtail is going to be very nice if we ever find a hook. see where Penguinator heads next. He's got most everything open to him. It looks like a plate Aquila's Tower. Probably wanting to just kind of clear all of the overworld as much as possible before going to actually do the moon. An error with another reset. And that curse ring has just been such a story of the seed for Aaron. Not picking it up has made his job so much harder. Very true. They are definitely one of the most sought out items in Free Enterprise. Looks like our runners are going to high five at the top of the tower. And we see an ant line here. Best, but not the worst place for Antlion. 
No, definitely with all the experience that Pinganator has gotten from doing that reaction grind to the moon and clearing Dwarf Castle and clearing all of Baron Castle, as well as doing the Wyvern at Osiris, should not be any trouble for Pinganator. A hooded ornament. The Cursed Ring was in the upper rightmost chest in the first floor of Antlion. The one where a lot of runners will only pick up on the way back out as they're walking, except that arrow used an exit in order to get out and never actually walked by or picked up that chest. And with Double Quake, I don't see this fight being too much of a problem. Although poor Cecil, with only a Dancing Dagger equipped. It does give him something to do without triggering any counters, so that's nice. And as Dusty Griff points out, Air is going to have a lot more trouble with this fight than Banganator does. The lack of levels and the lack of HP overall is going to make this much rougher. Going to be depending on self cast a lot, I think. Penguinator making good use of those illusions he picked up, covering Rydia, and is through the fight. And just a gold apple. Yeah, that is not the reward that Air is at least going to want to see here, if he's able to get through this fight. I think they are checking some trap chests here on, on the way of walking out. Uh, might be looking to get one of those trap chest encounters to maybe have Edge steal uh, some sirens or to and or get uh, some quality gear, maybe for Cecil. Yeah, a good sword. Any sword for Cecil would be nice. Yeah, and unfortunately, Simbu Air has not really He's been kind of bouncing back and forth uh, between various checks, got some Artemis arrows from Sheila 1, which helped do a little bit of extra damage to this Wyvern, but has not really been able to do um, anything to kind of make progress. He has to be feeling really behind at this point and might be getting a little bit tilted. alert just not giving up the goods right now. Well, there's one at least. One siren. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Two sirens. Indeed, and as Pigment is showing, you can absolutely continue to steal. It's not like other Final Fantasies, where as soon as you get one steal, they no longer have anything. You can keep trying and keep getting stuff.
and did get three sirens there. Very nice. And I missed the item at the end. As did I. Oh, another ninja hat. Yeah, it looks like Error might be doing some trap chests in the Fame March. Uh, would definitely be probably looking for the Toad Lady one most of all. Penguin doing the uh, Sheila one check. Going to be very disappointed with those arty arrows. Yeah, probably a little, although since he's left it hanging for so long, uh, knowing that Eric couldn't have gotten any sort of jump on him from doing it won't be too bad. He'll probably feel okay about it. I think at this point the only thing left open to him is either the moon or that dark elf fight at Leviathan. And both are possible, although I imagine that you're probably just going to go to the moon. Uh, with both those black mages having stop, the dragon fight won't be too scary once the dark elf switches over to dragon form. Unfortunately, that Edward hiding and taking the turn away from Sid, uh, not able to get a mute bell off against those ghosts for Error's side. Uh, hopefully, with a little party arrangement, we'll be able to get it next time. Yeah, Edward making things very rude. And Penguinator heading up to the moon. And does get that mute bell off in time on error side. Yeah, and queues up a Titan with Rydia. Um, the ghosts do eventually start punching. So you are in a little bit of a clock here but should be able to get through, and indeed does. And picks up Quake on Palum. And a crystal sword. Up, up, up. Well, if he can actually go uh, get that Baron Key from Dwarf Castle and then go pick up that Cecil, he's right back in this. Or at least he'll be able to make up a lot of ground very quickly. Oh right, the Baron Key was off of the Wyvern. Those guards hitting like trucks. And Edge doing his job too, hitting right back with that mute dagger. These guards are considered mages, so that mute knife doing a lot of extra work.
one of the things with Final Fantasy IV when the original developers put in stats for the locations of, especially the moon bosses, uh, if they didn't use a particular attack, like Bahamut never actually punches you, uh, they felt pretty free to give them a lot of physical power. Or if you never cast magic or really need a magic spell to land, like a status effect, or really up the magic power in a spot. Yeah, that's why Valvalis's spot can be pretty rude early on for how hard the magic can hit. French Vanilla Sisters are scary. Yeah, they do a lot of damage to early level parties. And just gets a Morius. That's not the reward he was looking for. Where are the key items, game? I think Penguinator's located them. We just need to actually beat some bosses for them at this point. And Error having a much better time with his Bygen fight. Yeah, those extra levels doing a lot of work for him. Penguinator looks to be probably going to do the bottom-up play, going to the seventh floor, I believe, of the Lunar Subterrain, to where there are two bosses and three key item checks. Still only has seven key items, though, so won't be getting any bonus XP here. Maybe looking to hold on to those sirens until he does have... 10 key items, so he can get that double XP. Yeah, very true. And error is through Bygen. GG to him. Yeah, that has to be a bit of a relief and feel much better seeing his edge here, too. Goodbye, Edward. And Pepita asking in chat if anyone has checked the, the package boss. That's correct. Neither runner has done that yet. Do you remember when the last time Pegnator saved? Because it would be very interesting to think about... Um, resetting back out to where you could have that hourglass again. But Toad's going to do the work, I think. Yeah, I do not remember where he saved. Uh, these guys are rude. They kind of hit like a truck. Yeah, they sure do. Let's just hit him with all the status effects. Well, one out of two is not bad. Maybe they're going to be able to clean up these uh, tiny, tiny Dark Imps now. Uh, they'll do almost no damage to him. 
uh, able to berserk that that edge, and probably be looking to get some life glitches off. Yeah, even without ten key items, this is a nice bit of experience. Yeah, overall you'd get a hundred thousand here. Uh, in vanilla, and so each imp will be about 33,000 uh, XP, and if you get life glitches off on any of them, that'll be just an extra 33,000 for each life glitch you get. back up the tower with his newly upgraded party. Gonna give that uh, tower location a another try. Yeah, it should be noticeably easier that edge in the party. Grenaders through, getting four to five levels or so on each of his party members, and picks up a rat tail and an earth crystal. Ooh. Still no hook, but there are two bosses up on up in Zot. Absolutely, and does give you access to that Troya Treasury, which does have a chance of some tier seven gear out of there without having to fight any enemies. It's entirely possible that if he doesn't get any good weapons for Cecil by the time he goes to Zeromus, that we'll be using the pass to go get that, to go check and get any last minute good ones for him. And Valvalis, that's kind of a nope. Yeah, uh, Plague doesn't punch you, so she's going to punch real hard. And per the chart, it looks like she has full magic defense in this spot. got Dr. Dialogue and his robot friend. The very tiny Rosa casting Berserk on Edge. Meanwhile, Air is getting through this uh, antlion fight. It's a little bit rough, uh, but Sid and Edge probably will be able to handle it the rest of the way through. Yep. And for anybody who's curious why we have a very tiny Rosa, I'm guessing that Penguinator was worried about a possible Golbez. Yeah, we haven't seen Golbez yet, and so that's a good play uh, that I hadn't thought of at all. Of uh, a good bit of analysis, Ally. But Quake takes them both down. And Rosa gets the Berserk off before the, um, the gas comes out, which means the edge will continue to kind of just take everybody down. Well, until he actually gets gassed and then takes a nap. Very rude. Very rude. 
Yeah, it's probably because we're not sitting around listening to Dr. Lugay's dialogue. Don't want to hear him speech if I... taking a nap. And on the other screen, the error is through that antlion. Yeah, some more level swarm is very good. Hopefully he'll get some more characters getting noticeably higher agility than his Sid Anchor. Uh, and maybe we'll be able to get another... Oh, just going to reset on that, unfortunately. Uh, so still won't have any extra agility to try and get more, more work done with that Wyvern. And we see our hook on Penguinator's side. Now, do you think you might uh, go stay, take a save outside of the Crystal Sword Altar and then maybe go bail on, on the, the moon for a little bit? Since we're still looking for Calbrena, I would probably check and see just real quick if either one of these bosses left are our missing boss. Um, and then, yeah, probably bail and see what... Uh, what the hook gives me. Yeah, being able to have that rat tail and pink tail turn in, as well as having the earth crystal there for another key item check. And Penguinator is known for having, uh, having and managing multiple saves pretty well. So we'll see if he does any of that here. Looks like we're going to see some Zerker Rosa strats. Yeah, and get cooped in chat asking where sirens were. Uh, sirens are available for stealing, since we do have J item and J item drop tables uh, turned on in this particular flag set. Life glitch and no uh, Palom XP on that one. That hurts a little bit with only two sirens left, too. We'll see if that changes Penguinator's long term plans for what levels he wants his party to be at. He might just switch to Cecil and Edge doing all the work. Well, if he finds himself a crystal sword, um. Cecil and Rosa is your end team party right there. For sure. An error has joined Penganator on the moon and is going to be finding that Valvalis fight and quickly resetting out of it. Yeah, I could see that being one of the last places our runners check. Yeah, although Penguinator is getting the levels to where it's not going to be such a big deal for him. Could throw Edge in the back row, uh, since that his Edge should be back row glitched at this point, I believe. 
uh, and use Berserk with Rosa and just kind of let Edge take care of it. Uh, and Marilyn, no, I don't think Penguinator has checked the Crystal Sword boss yet. He's just kind of doing this grind right before doing that check. As Rosa gets entangled, that's kind of rude. That's very rude, especially if that might have eaten the last Artemis arrow. I think these dragons want revenge. We see weak on both of the black mages. And I think that puts Palum, uh, three to four levels away from having Nuke. It looks like Air is just doing some random encounters on the moon to try and get a little bit of experience. We see Water Hag here at the Crystal Altar. Or Crystal Sword Altar. Yeah, Water Hag is going to punch pretty hard. Might be able to knock some people out if he gets a chance. And yeah, uh, Penguinator did use that last Artemis arrow. A Ninja Debugger, it should be about 120,000 XP here with 10 key items. And we see Meteo on the kid. Yeah, and a Luka key. Yeah, at this point I'd be getting out of dodge, seeing what's down on Earth with all these key items that open up boss locations. Yeah, I think we still have the Pale Dim spot to check, though. It looks like we're switching Cecil over to a little bit of cover strat, picking, giving him a headband and Dragoon armor and taking off the Cursed Ring. And that Cecil has been anchoring for Banquinator for quite a while. And Air feeling like he's bitten off a little bit more than he can chew on the moon comes back down to deal, hopefully deal with this Wyvern. And we see the Magus sisters. They're kind of rude. But so is Edge with that mute knife. Yeah, I think Edge is going to have a fun time in this fight. And Eric giving this Dark Elf a try.
the magic here won't be too big of a deal. The hardest part is going to be dealing with the dragon form when it switches over. Uh, but like we talked about before, Radiant Pell and both of them stop. And so we'll be able to kind of keep that dragon form locked down since it does not have the boss bit. And if Error has any of those Artemis arrows left, putting them on Rosa would definitely take down that form quickly. Yeah, absolutely. And Penguinator is through, picks up Nuke on Quack Kid. And is rewarded with a nice but not fantastic ring. So either that pan is behind that valvulus or one of these chains down here on Earth. Where do you think you go first? I would probably go, well, check the rat tail and pink tail first, um, and then probably the uh, earth crystal, because there's two boss checks there. Yeah, that seems pretty reasonable and playing playing the numbers game a little bit and no one's gone into the giant so we still have those two bosses up there as well as one boss at the king queen evelyn spot that no one knows either uh, i don't remember who the boss was uh from uh checking the top of, of lower babel uh, but i don't remember that being the cabrana it was ashura And yes, Value Cave was checked. Um, it was the Baron Guards. And I don't remember what the key item was. It was Emporius. Oh yeah, all the value. Absolutely. Really looking for that uh, multi-target ice to spell out of an item at this stage of the game. And Air doing a good job with a chuck that we have not seen yet. And uh, Penguin are using a Legend Sword. And Air are finding the pan. That is spicy. I think it's too little too late for him, but that's definitely a piece of the puzzle that might be a little while before Penguinator checks, even though Penguinator doesn't have a whole lot to do left. And only getting a dragon god from the pink tail. Well, Riddy's a little bit happy with that, but... Uh, yes, Conquerors, I do believe that uh, Error has not defeated that Wyvern yet. Now, if it were you, would you open up the Kakol shop to see what they have to sell? Uh, I definitely would, since uh, not even just to see what they have to sell, but with Edge being able to throw an Excal and Cecil being able to use an Excalibur, I would 100% go claim my Excalibur for Cecil. I always forget that he gives you an Excalibur too. Yeah, definitely then. Yeah, being able to get things like Zeus Gauntlets or Power Shirts uh, would be very, very useful for Penguinator.
and Sheila having no goods today. No, Sheila pretty much giving you the Wyvern killing pack with Artemis arrows and a heroin room. Uh, but Penguinator finds the tower key here in Luca Gate. And just guarded by a Leviathan. Yeah, both our runners are now tied up at three objectives completed apiece. Uh, and Air has a pretty good shot, I believe, of taking out the next one, too. Uh, Air has completed Dwarf Castle, so should be able to have a Dragon Whip along with that Heroin Rope if he wants to have Rydia uh, do some really solid melee damage. Penguinator takes down that Leviathan. Yeah, pretty easy with that lit three cast. Uh, not too much to worry with Leviathan there. At what point do you think you start doing some uh, really kind of out there checks and go maybe check the giant for King Queen Evelyn in the element spot or for that Calbrana fight or go do the package uh, to do also check Calbrana. I would probably take out the tower and that earth crystal first just because um, Penguinator is still looking for a pan as well. But yeah. I was more thinking from Error's side. Uh, he know he pretty much has to know he's pretty far behind at this point. So when does he make some pretty big gambles? I would probably start as soon as he finishes this wyvern. Just start. I'd start with the package. Um, he doesn't have the hook to check King Queen Eblen, but um, package and giant for sure. Hello, Baldin. I believe that's the last of our lunar bosses as well. Yeah, we've seen Plague, D Lunars, Ogopogo, uh, Baldin. But there is still a Golbez somewhere out there. Yeah, possibly he's not, he's sir, not appearing in the seat at all. And Air able to get up three people with Star Veils, doing a little bit more damage on those reflected Mega Nukes. Rose is angry. Yeah, she is right to be. She has taken a lot of mega nukes to the face so far this seed. And error gets through. GG. Yeah, that has to feel a lot better for Error. And now he can finally go pick up his Cecil uh, at Baron and use that Crystal Sword. And technically takes a lead in terms of completed objectives.
don't think Air is going to have enough time to actually pick up levels uh, in order to make Cecil useful enough to go to Zeromus before Pangonator gets a chance to. And Pangonator has a lot more boss checks available to him. Looks like Error is going to make the gamble, though. Yeah, I mean, we're an hour and almost an hour, 15 minutes into the seed. Uh, Penguinator is a great player and has not dot done yet, so you feel like it's going to be behind something a little bit strange. Well, one of the ways that Eric could have made up a lot of XP very quickly is taken off the table as King Queen Evelyn show up in the Mega Sisters spot. Yeah, it would have been nice to see these folks somewhere a little harder. And up in Zot, we have Cecil taking Kane's normal spot. Along with an edge being tied up in the chair. Uh, and Hanger Canuck, the pan was behind the Dark Elf at the Leviathan spot. And we see the Calbrenas here in the Tower of Zot. Yeah, that's pretty much going to spell the end of it for error. There's not too much seed to come back from at this point, I'm sure. You really have to feel for him. This has been a, a rough seed for him. Uh, just kind of went wrong when he didn't pick up that cursed ring and wasn't able to get the extra levels like Pinguinator was from that reaction grind. Um, and just a, a rude constellation of bosses with a pretty low HP party has kind of done error in here on the seed. I think the only key item spot that Air, that Penguinator hasn't checked yet is that Leviathan spot, correct? I believe so. And it looks like he is beeline and straight for it. Yeah, so I think Penguinator knows it's either here or behind a Demist somewhere. And we know, of course, that the pan he needs is here. Or I wonder if he's still thinking about that Val Ballas that he left there on the moon. That's true. I totally forgot about that. Thank <laughs> you. 
and this will go much faster for Penguinator with Nuke and his party having so many more levels. Yeah, but that advanced AI that board seems to have put in, the 4.0 version, uh, Piggy's the Rydia that had a weak spell queued up. Yeah, poor P Piggy Rydia. Just can't win for losing in this seed. Yeah, well, she's done work. Uh, and Zerdovix in chat asking where the Crystal Sword was. It was in a trap chest in the, uh, the Sylph Cave. With Penguinator getting his pan, I doubt we'll even see a Sheila 2 check. Now, I wonder if we will see that run down into uh, Kakol's shop to get an Excalibur. Penguinator, though, might be feeling very confident in just going straight Reflex Strats with, I think, all three of his casters having White and Nuke. Uh, Death is sealed had the tower key. And we bonk a monk, and here's our crystal. Right, and that is go mode for Penguinator. Yep, not even going to check that Kakol shop. Just going to head straight to Troya. So at this point in the run, we have a question we like to ask. Would you like to do the honors tonight? Absolutely. Uh, so Zeromus is a little bit too much for us to randomize his placement. Uh, so we do a fun thing. Uh, thanks to both Scala Kitty and Boardface, where we fight a different face of Zermus every time. So, chat, you have your Z-Flex out tonight. Whose butt are we going to kick tonight? Do you have any sprites you want to see tonight? I always vote for Clippy Miss. He's my favorite. That is definitely a good one to feel like taking down. How about you? Who's Who do you want to see tonight? I am sure I've seen just a small percentage of the new sprites that Scala put in the 4.0 uh, pool, so I always vote for a new sprite that I haven't seen before. Meanwhile, Air is through the uh, Baron Throne, picks up his Cecil. And Gambit in chat being very cheeky to uh, community member Natara, uh, who always wants Ultra Smiths, but Gambit asks if she's here, uh, then uh, if she's here, if not, then please Ultra. And we've got a little bit of Final Fantasy IX here. The giant gumball of death.
and Penguinator quickly throwing a Star Veil out on Palum and then throwing a Silk Web to slow down Zeromus a little bit and gets a nice counter uh, nuke bouncing off of that, that Palum uh, Star Veil. Yep, just throwing nukes like crazy. Yeah, we saw Edge do a little bit of chip damage. Uh, Penguin are being very careful to not uh, go over the uh, 41,000 damage, at which point Zeromus does a HP refill, because uh, he's looking to skip the refill here. Uh, that is correct, Random Chicken. Earth Crystal was at the D lunar spot behind those uh, Dark Imps. And yes, Coop, uh, dark damage would uh, be would be considered direct damage to Zeromus, and any form of direct damage that is not reflected damage uh, would trigger the the refill uh, if Zeromus is at a and would be left at an HP point that would let him refill. And we see Error head back to the moon. He is checking the Bahamut spot. But that's rock. Well, that's not rocks. That's GG. Yes, Penguinator with a final time of 158.53. GG to Penguinator, who is into the round of eight. Uh, and we'll be facing the winner of the Rivers McCown Much Paranoia match. And we are joined by Penguinator. GG's. Thank you. So, tell us about that seed. How did you feel? Uh, I guess early on, I think I overcommitted to a little bit of a slingshot on Palomon Rosa with the reaction grenade grind. And I also think I, I saw a grenade as I was running away from the fight, so I accidentally left that one and had to take another minute or two to actually find the fight I wanted. Um, so I felt a little behind just from the get-go after that. And I think I played a little slightly more gambly than I would have because of that. And then Baron Castle, Tower of Zod, everything coming up as dead ends felt pretty bad. Um, so the whole seat I was... I know mean, I was expecting error probably went to the moon at like 30 minutes and is probably going to dot down any second. Yeah, it turns out that reaction grind does really what sets you guys apart and the little bit of looting that you did that error didn't. Yeah, I guess picking up that dragon whip, I don't remember where that was exactly, but that let me get through the wyvern a little bit more easily early on, which actually didn't matter all that much having it early, but course was required at some point yeah and also you had picked up that curse string in that lion that error hadn't managed to pick up and that really slowed him down through that wyvern fight ah uh, yeah that that helps a lot on those summon spots especially yeah so that pretty uh barren uh empty earth in terms of key items that didn't feel so good huh uh yeah definitely not i Especially the Odin play, I was a little bit iffy going for that, and I was kind of feeling behind already, so I was gambling a little bit. Um, and then, so when it came up, uh, I think it was just an adamant, so I walked it out just for the key item, or maybe pink tail. Yeah, I don't remember what it was, but yeah. Um, and then you never went in, picked up that Excalibur that you had available to you. We were just committed to doing reflex jets, not even going to worry about doing a dark. Yeah, I had already finished most of the moon, uh, all of the moon that I wanted to do. And I had nuke on, I think, Palom at least by the time I came back. And really, once you have a couple new casters, the fastest thing you can do is just cast nuke, do fights, cast nuke. Uh, taking the time to forge, I don't think would have been worth it. Uh, even taking on the Dark Elf uh, with a little bit of bonus damage from the uh, Holy Weakness, I think it was still faster just to run out the fight and nuke rather than forge. Were you tempted at all to do that Dark Elf right after doing the Asura spot? 
thought about it for maybe a second, but I wasn't really equipped for it. I could have Berserked Edge, I think, at the time, and it would have been kind of slow to get through the first form. I could have used the Dragon Whip on the second phase again, but I didn't think it was that efficient at that point, and I think I still had other options as well, so didn't really want to do it at that point. Ellie, do you have any questions for Penguinator? Um, who are you hoping to go up against in the round of eight? Uh, so I'm kind of hoping for a Rivers match. Rivers, of course, uh, one of the best players of FF4 and a good friend. And we've actually managed to dodge each other more or less in most of the major tournaments. I think Zima Zone 1, we never actually matched up. And Zima Zone 2, he was taking a break from Free Enterprise at the time. So looking forward to potentially having a match against him finally. And in that run of eight, we're moving towards uh, best of three matches. How do you think that's going to change it for you? Uh, yeah, so I'm extra hyped that if I do get Rivers, it'll be a best of three because I'll give him two chances against me. Very nice. Um, but I think that's all of my questions. Uh, any more from you, Antidale? Uh, no, I think, uh, Penguin, you talked about it pretty well. Uh, and it looks like we do have a forfeit from Air. Uh, that was a really rough seed for him, just never quite getting the levels early or the, the couple of items that could have really catapulted him forward. Um, and unfortunately, it does end his run in the football gauntlet. Uh, GG's, Penguinator, and uh, happy to see you moving on into the round of eight. Thanks, and Gigi Stayer as well. He, he's a good friend, and I was I was scared this whole seed that he was going to get me. He's an excellent player as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, sometimes Rando's just going to Rando. Well, thank you all for hanging out with us this evening. Uh, I believe we are going to go raid Hupfin, uh, who is a Free Enterprise player, uh, a commentator both of Free Enterprise and... A link to the past, and I believe she is probably playing some free enterprise. Thanks so much, y'all. Everybody have a good night, and thanks for coming out.